Hey guys, it's Warren here, and we're in this really weird lull period at the minute between Christmas and New Year, where I feel like the size of a whale, I've totally overindulged, and for that reason, it can be more difficult to drum up the enthusiasm you need to cook from scratch in the kitchen. So I wanna do this video to show you just how easy it is to cook loads of dinners at the same time in bulk, and then stick them in the freezer so you've got loads of dinners in the freezer ready for when you need them. I'm gonna be doing this with the help of my trusted GoPro here, and we're going to be making lasagna, chicken and prawn curry, spaghetti bolognese and a fish pie. So without further ado, make sure you've got loads of disposable containers ready and wooden spoons and let's get cooking. Now we'll start by preparing the onion and garlic because all the recipes have these in. So take three large or four medium sized onions and eight cloves of garlic, chop in half and then place it into a blender or food processor and chop into small pieces. Now take a large non-stick frying pan and heat some oil up over a medium heat on the stove. Now leave the onion and garlic to fry for about 10 minutes while stirring regularly. Meanwhile prepare the carrots we'll be using in our spaghetti bolognese and lasagna. So take 4 carrots, slice the ends off, peel and then slice into chunks. Add the carrots to a large casserole dish and then we'll prepare some bacon which will also be used in the bolognese. Take eight rashers of bacon and using a sharp knife, slice into small chunks. Now add the bacon to the casserole that has the carrots in and remember to wipe your work surface clean because we've just had raw meat on it. Remember to keep stirring the onion and garlic whilst it's frying, then add some oil to the casserole with the carrots and bacon and fry until the bacon's cooked. When the onion and garlic have finished frying off, place half in the casserole with the carrots and bacon, a quarter in another saucepan that will cook the curry in, then leave the remaining onion and garlic in the original saucepan that will cook the fish pie in. Now add one kilogram of minced beef to our bolognese pan, 500 grams of chopped chicken breasts to our curry pan, and approximately 350 grams of fish pie mix to our fish pie pan. Ensure all the stoves are over a medium heat and then begin frying everything using separate spoons for each pan. So fry the beef for the bolognese until it's browned, fry the chicken for the curry until it's white all over, and fry the fish for the pie until it's sealed. And when it has, place a lid on the pan and set the fish aside. Next, when the chicken's cooked on the outside, add all your spices, creamed coconut and stock and top the mixture up with some boiling water. Give the curry a stir and leave to simmer over a low heat on the back burner. Next, take the bolognese mixture and when the beef is browned, begin adding the ingredients, including herbs, tomatoes, red wine, of course, and anything else that's needed for the recipe. Again, leave to simmer on the back burner until the sauce has thickened up nicely. Next, we need to prepare the potato topping for our fish pie. So take four potatoes, peel, and then chop into equal sized chunks. Bring some water up to boiling point in a saucepan on the stove and add the potatoes to the pan. Then leave to cook for between 15 and 20 minutes. And lastly, we can prepare a white sauce that we'll use in our lasagna and fish pie. Weigh out some butter and some plain flour, then make a roux over a low heat on the stove. Now add your milk and continue to whisk the mixture over a low heat until it thickens up nicely. Once the white sauce is ready, pour half of it into the pan that has the fish in. Add a handful of peas, then mix everything together until all the ingredients are covered in the white sauce. Now take some disposable tins that are suitable for the oven and freezer and separate the fish mixture in. Ensure it's evenly spread out, then take the cooked potatoes that have been drained from their water. Add some milk, then begin mashing the potatoes using a potato masher, then a fork until it's nice and smooth. Now separate half the mashed potato over the top of each fish pie tin then use the back of a spatula to smooth the mashed potato out nicely. Finally, take a fork to rough the topping up until it looks something like this. Place the lid on and for your reference, write what's in them, then leave them to cool and place them in the freezer. And these fish pies can be cooked at 180 degrees centigrade, 350 Fahrenheit, once fully defrosted, for 35 minutes with the lid removed. Next, once your curry's finished cooking and the sauce has thickened up nicely, take some plastic freezer-proof containers, courtesy of your local Chinese takeaway, and separate the curry in. Place the lid on, leave to cool, and then it's ready to freeze. And this can be reheated in a pan or in the microwave once fully defrosted. And finally, the bolognese. And we're going to use half of this mixture to make our lasagnas with. So, take some oven and freezer-proof containers and line the bottom with some pre-cooked pasta. Take the remaining white sauce we saved from the fish pie earlier and drizzle a quarter over the first layer of pasta. Now add a layer of the bolognese, 
followed by a final layer of pasta, another drizzle of white sauce that's evenly spread all over, and finally sprinkle your lasagnas with some grated cheddar cheese. Place on the lid and leave to cool and then they're ready to put in the freezer. And these can be reheated in the oven on 180 degrees centigrade, 350 Fahrenheit, once fully defrosted with the lid removed for about 35 minutes. And once you've made all the lasagnas you want, take some freezer proof plastic containers and separate the rest of the bolognese between them. And these are perfect for spaghetti bolognese. Again, place the lids on, leave to cool and then they're ready for the freezer. And these can be reheated once fully defrosted in the microwave or in a saucepan. Okay guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and you can now see just how easy it is to cook from scratch and in bulk whilst keeping your freezer full. Now, you can see all of the recipes I've used in this video by clicking on the link appearing on screen here. Remember, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not a regular viewer. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.